This is question 7 from paper 3-1 from the June 2020 CIE exams. Up the top right of the screen, a card will bring you to the playlist of all my solutions for the questions in this paper. And in the description below, you'll find a link to an image of this question. And I recommend trying the question before looking at my or any solution. Okay, this question revolves around this function here, fx. And they first ask us about the derivative of it. And then they ask us about the integral of it. Now, in an exam, you won't have this advantage. But we'll take, it, we'll take advantage of being able to graph this now. You can use a, um, any online tool. I'll pop on the screen now an image from one of them. And as you can see, it has this wavy function repeats over time. The question tells us only to look between minus pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, plus 3 pi over 2. So I've marked those lines in there. Now let me uh, draw, draw that roughly on the screen what we're looking at. We're looking at a shape like this. So the, and it repeats over time, but I've, I've cut it between, um, let's see, pi over 2 and um, pi over sorry 3 pi over 2 so looking at that world we have something like this doesn't need to be too accurate and they ask us to show that the derivative of this function um, for all x in this interval is less than zero now we can actually see that already from the image if you think about it, the derivative here is minus like a fairly large number maybe minus one or so uh, down here then goes minus to a pretty big number. It's always pointing down the slope The slope to this uh, function is always pointing down. Therefore, it's less than zero So that's what they'd like us to find but we don't we're not able to draw a picture in the exam So we'll have to do it using maths. So they want us to find the derivative. That's fine. We have a, a quotient here. Let's say u divided by phi so we can go ahead and use the quotient rule you can, you can also use the product rule. Let me just point out how here, fx, I'm not going to do it this way, but actually this is the way I usually do it, but I tend to teach with the quotient rule because students I find rather the quotient rule. And if a student's good enough to use the product rule uh, like this, they probably don't need my help as much. So that's how you'd use the product rule, turn this bottom row into a multiply like this. And that's just the product rule. But we'll go ahead and use the quotient rule. I'll write out uh, the formula for it. You first take v, left alone, multiply it by the derivative of u, and then take away u, left alone, multiply it by the derivative of v, all divided by v squared. Uh, to make this a little easier, let's just write them out separately here. u is equal to cosine x. The derivative of u will be um, sorry, minus sine x. And then v was equal to 1 plus sine x. And the derivative of v is equal to, the derivative of 1 is 0. And the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So we just need to go ahead and put all this into the formula. The derivative of fx is equal to, let me uh, get all of this here, 1 plus sine x multiplied by minus sine x. That's v times u prime. Take away a u multiplied by v prime, which is a cosine x as well. And all of that is over 1 plus sine x squared. We can clean this up a little bit. We have cosine squared. Uh, well, let me multiply this out. No, I'll do it all in one. We have 1 times sine x. That's going to get minus sine x. We have sine x by minus sine x. That's minus sine x squared. We have cosine x by cosine x. That's minus cosine squared. And just to remind everyone, cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So we have a minus cosine, a minus sine. So we have a minus 1. All of that is over 1 plus sine x squared. Uh, let me rewrite this top row to be 1 plus sine x and I'll take a minus outside it hopefully you recognize that's the same uh, took a minus out of this took a minus out of that that's all I did over 1 plus sine x but look this is the same as the bottom row there's two of them on the bottom row so we just cancel that into the one of them 
And uh, our very final answer is minus one over one plus sine x. Now, I'd like to keep this picture, so let me just rub this out and uh, finish the question here. So we found the derivative um, f, uh, f prime x, the derivative of x is equal to this, but they wanted us to show that it's less than zero. How do we do that? We need to look at this and think of what we understand. I understand sine x a lot. Sine x is always bigger than minus one and less than one. I understand it very well. How about one plus sine x? One plus sine x. Uh, well, if I add one to everything, I get one plus sine x is always bigger than zero and always less than two. And then uh, I'm, I'm trying to understand one divided by one plus sine x. We'll, we'll put a minus in next. Um, so the bigger the bottom row is, the smaller the number. The smaller the bottom row is, the bigger the number. And then it matters if it's plus or minus. Well, it's a good thing the bottom row is always plus. It's between zero and two. So this is always plus. Well, that's, that's actually all I need already. But it's, it's always plus. Um, it's the biggest the bottom row gets is two. So the, the smallest this gets, uh, this is always, let's see, that's, yeah, this is always less than, um, let me see, less than a half. Because the biggest uh, it gets, the bottom row gets is two, so the smallest it must get is a half. But either way, it's certainly bigger than zero, just because this is always positive. So if you wanted, you could say that. On this row, you could say it's bigger than zero, so this is bigger than zero. And then, then we're left with, we want to put a minus in. So let me do it over here. Minus one over one plus sine x. Well, it's the same as this, except it's a minus a half on one side. And when we take a minus on both sides, we have to flip this here. So this guy, which is f prime, is always less than minus a half. Or as they wanted to know, um, if, if I'm saying it's left, less than minus a half, it's always down here. So they wanted us to show that it's less than zero. Well, less than minus a half is less than zero. Um, so it's, it's everything that's less than minus a half is already less than zero. So you could just say f prime x is, which is what this is, is in fact less than zero, which is what they wanted. They'd, I, I assume they'd also take less than minus a half because uh, it's more exact actually as an answer. Okay, uh, uh, hopefully that answers uh, that. I'll rub this out. I'll I want to leave the picture over here and we'll do part B. Okay, part B, they ask us to find the integral of fx. I've just replaced fx with the actual function fx just so we can see what we're doing. Basically, that's what they want. They want to find the integral of this between pi over 6 and pi over two. Just to remind you what that looks like, here's the graph still. Pi over two might be here, and pi over six is here. Um, let me just write them in. And what finding the integral does is finds us the area of this shape. Now you wouldn't necessarily know what it looked like in the exam, but just, just to remind you, um, that's it there. Now we don't use any of the information from part A really. Uh, we have to integrate this completely separately. So lots of students would, got, would have got confused by that. They taught, because a lot of exams do this, they taught they were using the information from part A. But they're not. Uh, you need to learn how to integrate something like this. And it can be difficult. It can be an art form, as it were. Often what we do when we have a top and a bottom like this is we take one of them, the more complicated looking one, and replace it and hope the other one disappears. And you, as you get better where you can see into the future, one or two steps into the future, and in this case I can see that that will work. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the more complicated one, the bottom row. I'm going to say u is equal 1 plus sine x. And I'll show you exactly where it disappears. So we're used to this substitution method. Um, we, when we, we find what u is, and then we find what du dx is. And the u, du, the u dx of this is cosine x. That's where the cosine appears, and it's going to cancel. That's how I can see it just one step into the future. The derivative of this is actually the same as that. 
so they're probably going to cancel hopefully uh, I rearrange this because I really want to know what dx is equal dx is equal to du divided by cosine x okay so I rewrite this one I leave the limits off because the limits change um, I, you could find out what the limits of u are, but I, I find it's a waste of time because we can just change it back at the end. So this, uh, let's call this guy i, just to save me writing it again. So i is equal to cosine x, I can't replace that with anything. This bottom row I've replaced with u, I'll leave an integral in. I, I, again, I won't put the numbers because they're different numbers now. And dx, I can replace dx, that becomes du divided by cosine x. And look what happens. They cancel. And that's what I wanted. That's uh, why I use this as a substitution. So we'll, we'll carry this up here. Um, we're left with the integral of 1 over u, du. A very simple integral, one we learn. It's in our formulas. The answer is always natural log of u, or the absolute value of that, really. And this is evaluated at some point. Now, we don't know the points. So let's go ahead and replace u with what we know. So this is equal to the natural log of, uh, what is u? 1 plus sine x. Luckily enough for us, 1 plus sine x, we actually seen in part 1, is always bigger than 0 and less than 2. So we don't need this absolute value. So we'll just put in a normal bracket. Don't, don't worry, if you left the absolute value or you didn't have the absolute value there, the exam won't mind too much in this question. Sometimes as you go into college and stuff, that will become important. And even in, um, in Cambridge International, it sometimes becomes important. So uh, it's probably the difference between 95 and 100% on that exam. Right, uh, let's see. So, oh, we still ha we have these numbers to put in. We have between pi over 6 and pi over 2. I have these the wrong way around, don't I? Pi over 6 is smaller than pi over 2. So we put these numbers in, we uh, put the top one in first, this one minus this one, because uh, remember what we're doing here, we're finding all the area of everything down here from the first one, and then we're taking away all the area from here. So this whole number minus this number leaves us this number. So that's where we're getting the in-between. So natural log of 1 plus sine um, sine pi over 2 or sine 90 degrees is equal to 1 so we have natural log of 1 plus 1 or 2 I, we could have put in take away the natural log of sine x uh, pi over 6 is a half so we get 1 and a half or 3 over 2 3 over 2 uh, let's let me, yeah, let me rub this out and just put a 2 in here um, right, logs. When they when we take away two logs that have the same base, log to the base e, log to the base e, or natural log, it's we can also write it like this: uh, natural log of two divided by three over two. And we can how do we divide a fraction? Turn it upside down, multiply. We've done that for years, so we get natural log of four over three. And that's uh, that's the full answer. The question asked uh, the exact answer simplified. So I guess this is exactly correct. This is exactly correct. It's not simplified though. This is the simplest we can get it. Uh, but if you put that into a calculator, this, this, or this into a calculator, that would not be the exact answer. You'd have to give a certain number of decimal places. They want to see this as an exact answer. If you give them decimal places after putting one of these in a calculator, they'll give you some of the marks, most of the marks, but they will take some away. Okay, I hope that answers all your questions. If you have any follow-up questions or anything I've made a mistake in, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching and have a great day.